So for to for this week's project, we are going to go outside and use nature as our inspiration and do some mud painting. What I have is I just went out in the yard and I found some dry dirt and I went and kind of looked around the yard to see if if there was different types of dirt. Is there like darker dirt? Is there lighter dirt? To see what kind of differences the um, dirt would make when it was liquefied. I did find that the easiest way to get it nice and smooth like a paint was to have um, the the dirt be dry. I tried it with some wet dirt and it took me a while to get it mixed up and I should have remembered this because in clay when we make our slip which is just liquefied glue or liquefied clay we always have dry clay to begin with so and you're just going to add a little water and you just want to add enough to where and this may be personal preference too to where it's not super liquidy and you can stir it up now this one has some leaves and stuff in it which is okay so you're going to stir it up until it's kind of I wouldn't say like batter, but kind of the consistency of paint, a little thicker than water. Once you have it, then you're going to use it with your painting. Now, what I did was I went around and found some different, um, different clays and soils to see what they would do differently. And I thought it was cool that you would think that potting soil, which is what you plant your um, flowers in always looks really really dark but actually it's turned out really light because I don't think there's actually a lot of dirt in there I think there's more like um, moss and stuff that helps the the plants grow better then I had my yard dirt and these were two different these two were yard dirts here and then I also did some clay now in our neighborhood we have this red yellow clay and you can see the difference between the clay because this is a clay and this is to dirt and I know you guys have a lot of that in the Flint Hills but you also have something that I don't have here and it's the river clay and I used to go and play with it when I was young and it's like a, a slate blue color and you can kind of find it down over by like rivers and streams and it would have like a bluey gray color as opposed to what the um, clay that we have here which is more of a golden brown color it's like a warm color compared to the other clays now you could also and I thought that this would be kind of cool if you wanted to um, maybe recycle some of your uh, your dye from dyeing your Easter eggs or you could just use like I did I used um, uh, food coloring and you can go in and add some food coloring and when Packer and I were it, we were practicing kind of experimenting he found that it was easier if you had the dry soil and then put the drops of food coloring into it and then mixed it up and you can tell this is a yellow just by how bright it is whereas if you went to a bluer one, and this one he added blue, the blue seemed to have more of a slaty brown or gray color to it. So you can kind of experiment there. And like I said, you may be able to use your Easter, your Easter dye and just try it that instead of putting the water in, just put the Easter dye and see what that does. So once you have all of your, your paints, your mud paints mixed up, then you're going to do a painting. Now, since we're outside, I figured why not go with what you have and you could use like a stick. I do have a paintbrush. I had a fork that I was mixing my, um, my mud with that actually did some cool textures. And Packer made me a little pointy stick so that I'd have like a nice edge. But you could use whatever you have. You can even use your fingers if you wanted to. So, I thought it would be cool to do a painting that kind of represented, you know, nature in itself. And we've done a tree before in the past, which I thought would be kind of cool to do. So, first thing with any 
still life, I'm going to want to put a horizon line. So I'm going to take the, the lighter of my, and this is actually my clay. This isn't even my colored. I'm kind of blended in the end, giving it kind of a look however I want. Then I'm going to do my main tree and I want it to be nice and dark. So I'm going to use that original yard dirt. And I'm going to start, we've done this before like in second grade, where you start with your branch or your, your stump. Then you just do that. And as it goes out, what's nice with this mud is you can kind of just pull it and go. It's kind of very organic already. Now, and then you just build. You make a V, and then you make another V. You just basically make a V at each end. Now, this is a little wider, so I'm going to go back in and make this a little wider. And I thought you can use your fork, or you could use, you know, too thick. You can actually do some, my fork was wet do some kind of textures in it. You can see right there I could do textures, but my dirt is a little. I'm going to do a little bit more of my tree and then I'm going to do a highlight because a highlight is just where you go in and add some lightness on one side or the other to where it gives it the look of having a shadow. But I want to get my main tree done first. And see, I'm just doing V's. Every end is a V. Then there's more V's as they go out. Then at the very end, there's just kind of some branches. Now, when I was talking about doing my highlight, I'm going to use that grit or that clay, and I'm going to go in on one side and give it a little bit more of a light color to it. Have you ever seen that where one side of something looks a little lighter? So I'm going to go up and follow it around. Oops, I want the potting soil. And just kind of on that, that one edge. Oops, sometimes if it's too watery, it won't work very well. Now, this is the side I did it on. Kind of go up and maybe have some of those last branches actually be that lighter color of the clay. So, and I think this needs a little bit more down here, a little wider maybe. So, this could be my first tree. Now, I know that this one's in the foreground, so if I wanted to put something in the background, I'd do a smaller one behind it. So let's go ahead and do a background tree. Maybe it's right here on the horizon line. And just kind of go up and over. It's probably going to be smaller because it's further away. Now one thing you need to be aware of is we're painting with dirt. And when dirt dries, it's just going to basically crumble off. So this is more of a just a, a project where the process is what you're doing as opposed to the finished product because it will probably crack off. Now, I did read somewhere where you could seal it up with like um, spray paint or something if you wanted it to be um, sealed because it would just put a coat of spray paint on it. But like I said, this is more for just the experience of being able to go outside and um, make something from the stuff you have around you. Now, like I had said, you could go in, uh, let's do the potting soil. The potting soil is really light. So I kind of, oops, kind of just want to do a bit of an edge to it. Now Packard made me some yellow, which was really bright. I don't know if I'd want, want it that yellow or not. But again, you're just playing. Kind of that looks like almost like a fall fall day. I want to do some shadows. So I'm gonna do 
more of just a shadow around this tree of a lighter color. And there was some green that Packer had made me. Let's see if we can use some of it. add some values to your picture but you kind of get the idea of what we're doing and again you don't have to do a tree you can do whatever you see whatever you want you can just do an abstract one just by going in and you know painting something going in and kind of just going with what you what you have you know maybe you're wanting to do you know some type of flower in the neutral colors, which would what the browns would be neutral colors. We have daffodils coming up right now, kind of like daffodil kind of flavor or look to it. Maybe use your fork, kind of give yourself some looks there. I kind of like that with the texture there. But anyway, so you can do whatever you want. Like I said, a tree's nice, but anything just mix up your your mud paints with whatever you had like I said the ground potting soil really didn't work that well so I don't know if I would use that or not these are just two types of two types of mud that were in my yard one's a little bit darker than the other and like I said I had the um, clay and that's what it, like I said it looks like and again I thought the easiest way to get these nice and smooth was to make sure it was dry so maybe one day go out collect all your dirt and lay it out maybe on a paper plate or something so it gets dry in the sun and then the next day you can put it in add a little water and you can do your painting. I hope you guys have fun and enjoy the outdoors.